Uh, like, just uh, Jeannie, in a couple of weeks, it's 51 years, girl. Yeah. Now, I know I don't look that old. Just it's, uh, <laughs> Jeannie starts shaking her head when I get to go there. But I uh, heard about the Texas couple that, well, they, they, uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to go to Hawaii for their 50th anniversary. They wanted to be, you know, the sand and the ocean. But they decided, well, uh, his wife got terribly sick flying, and uh, he got sick, seasick, in a boat. So they decided they'd just come to California and visit the ocean in Southern California and walk the beach. And they were walking along, and he kicked up that lamp and a genie popped out of that thing and she said all right I'll give you one wish he said you know he said we we drove all the way from Texas out here to we really wanted to go to Hawaii uh, what I wish is for you to build us a highway from here from Los Angeles all the way to Honolulu that genie looked at him said are you crazy do you realize the astronomical impossibility where in the world the steel girders and concrete to have and how deep it is in the Pacific Ocean to support this kind of a bridge she said forget all of that I'll give you one more chance go ahead what's well he said you know we're celebrating 50 years of marriage and she's told me from the first day you just don't understand me so he said I just wish I could understand her the genie stood there for a moment and said, Do you want that a two-lane or a four-lane highway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyhow, hey, we're, we're just so excited. Uh, where is Billy? That had that, there you, no, that had the prayer. Oh, there you are. My goodness, girl. Such intensity and fervency. Whew. Melt them. I want to tell you something, people. We need to pray like there's a God because there is one. This sleepy-eyed, half-hearted type of, oh, God, may God grip our hearts. with. The, in fact, did you know that James said in chapter 5, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person. Whew. It brings results. A lot of times our prayers are just complaining in the name of God. Oh, God, you see how bad. It's terrible. And, oh, Lord, we don't know. And, my God, I'll talk to you more about it tomorrow, Lord. Hey, all you've done is have a fuss and fit in the name of God. Come on. Pray that there's a God that hears our prayers. And he's a God that desires to answer. Whoo, can I get a witness here today? <laughs> Uh, anyhow, we're just uh, thrilled to be able to have the opportunity of sharing with you. I want to talk to you this morning. And uh, first of all, I want to tell you, my message is about a piece of property that I hold a clear title deed to. I've had the, the deed for over 55 years. I, I didn't buy it. It was given to me without money and without price. Now, the donor purchased this property at a tremendous sacrifice. I'm not holding the property for speculation or resale since the title is not transferable. I haven't seen the property, but I have been given assurance that it's not a vacant lot. So, for over a half a century, I've been sending materials and I have the assurance that the greatest architect and builder of the universe has been working on this special home. It'll never need to be remodeled or repaired. It'll never deteriorate. It's special for me. Termites will never undermine its foundation because it's built on the rock of ages. Fire cannot destroy it. How many of you say thank God for that? Floods cannot wash it away. Earthquakes will never crack its walls. And floods will never wash it away. And it's a gated community like you've never seen. No locks or bolts will be needed for its doors because no thief or vile person will ever walk in this land whereby dwelling stands. It's almost completed. 
and made ready. I'm excited about it. It's where I will live and abide in peace without fear of ever being rejected or ejected. My heart is singing hallelujahs. <laughs> it's getting nearer and closer every day. Now I'm aware that I may have to pass through some valleys of shadows between my home in San Antonio and this journey where it ends. But I'm not afraid because my best My best friend that I met 56 years ago on the hills of Arizona while I was deer hunting and a rattlesnake threatening my life. And God spoke to me and said, look how much I love you. That thing should have bit you. I was within two feet of it. He said, look how I watch over you. That friend, <laughs> he's taken all fear of gloom and of the future and of eternity. <laughs> he came into my life. I have the assurance of his promise that he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And whatever dark valley of shadows that I've got to go through between here and that city of gold, I will not lose my way. Because he's already traveled the journey and he's promised to show me home. I think most of you know by now I'm talking about heaven. I don't think we talk enough about our future home. Let me share with you Actually, this is not my message. This is Jesus. Let me tell you three things that he says about heaven. Read with me. I'm going to look at this from John 14. And maybe, Brother Tom, the reason we don't talk about this is because we live in America, in such a materialistic culture and world of our day, and we fail to remember that we're pilgrims. We're sojourners. This world is not my home. I'm... Just passing through. So go ahead and get comfortable. Act like you're going to be here for a thousand years, but I got news for you. You're not. Let's look at it. John chapter 14 and the first six verses. Let not your heart be troubled. Wow. What a great word. Don't let your heart be troubled. You worrying about the future? He says, don't, 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 don't be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am. There you may be also. And where I go, and the way you know, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then one little passage that certainly fits with that is in Hebrews 13, 14, and I think you have it there. Look at this passage. For there is no permanent city for us here on earth. I'm glad you like where you're living, but there's no, hey, talk to the people in ready. <laughs> Over a thousand homes. There is no permanent city for us here on earth. We're looking for a city which is to come. Did you know the word heaven occurs just over 500 times in the Bible? Actually, the Bible talks about the three different kinds of heavens. First of all, there's the first heaven. 
Uh, that's the atmospheric heaven. Boy, it's filled with a lot of smoke these days. It's the sky. And then there's a second heaven. That's the stellar or celestial uh, heaven. It's outer space. And then there's the third heaven. That's the divine throne room. That's the abode of God. A great songwriter, in fact, most of you will remember the words of this song years ago. He put it like this. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith I can see it afar. My Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the text that I read from John chapter 14, those six verses, Jesus, this is actually the night before he goes to the cross that we celebrated the communion service. He's just celebrated the Passover with his disciples. He's designated Judas as the traitor. He identified Peter as, as the disciple that would deny him three times before the night is over. And it's in this that Jesus, right in this group, he tells them three things about heaven. Let, let's look at them right quick in these next few minutes. First of all, he says heaven is a real place. Second, it, he tells us that heaven is a prepared place. And thirdly, he tells us that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Look at me with this uh, just for a moment, that heaven is a real place. And I remind you, these are the words of Jesus, not my, my words. But notice, according to what Jesus said, heaven is a genuine place. It's a real place. Jesus doesn't go into a lot of details describing all that is there. Uh, that's in other places of Scripture. But he did call it, he did call it in this passage, a place where he was going, a place from which he would return, and a place that one day he would gather all to whom the Father had given him and, and take them to this real place. Now, this is reinforced in some other passages where Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 38, he said that he came down from heaven. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught us to pray. He said, our, pray after this manner, our Father which art in heaven. In Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1, it tells us that Jesus, after he performed his work upon the cross, that he sat down on the right hand of the throne of majesty in heaven. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 51, just before Jesus ascended into heaven, the scripture says that while he, do you know the last thing he did was bless his disciples. He blessed his children. I'm telling you what, he's a blesser. He blessed them. And the scripture said he was carried into the heavens. And the angel said, hey, 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 this same Jesus that you see taken into heaven, he's coming back. How many of you believe that? I'm telling you what, I believe it. Now, some say that heaven is just simply a figment of the mind. It's, a, it's, it's just a, a wish list. It's a state of the mind. It's not a figment of imagination. It's not just a wish list. I'm here to tell you this morning that heaven is real. Jesus tells us that it is not imaginary. It's not just pie in the sky. Heaven is spoken of in Scripture. I told you over 500 times. And sometimes it's referred to as a house, sometimes as a city, sometimes as a country. But it is a real place. It is a literal place. And, and we need to think more about it because I got news for you. You're just passing through this one. <laughs> you know, the Apostle Paul kind of expresses, I want you to look at this verse with me. Maybe you've never really thought of it in this, in this way. But Paul talks about our limitation of understanding of what's coming when he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2 through 4. Look at this verse. Here's what he says. I was caught up into the third heaven. Now, remember where the third heaven is? That's the abode, the place of God's throne. He said, I was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. 
And now listen to how, what he says. Now whether my body was there or just my spirit, I don't know. But I do know that I was caught up into paradise. And I heard things so astounding. They can't be told. In other words, there's, there's no reference point. Yeah, the, King, uh, the New King James says, Paul, Paul heard inexpressible words. Could you imagine somebody at that time talking about cell phones? <laughs> Computer technology? I'm telling you something. But Paul says that, that, that there's no reference point. In fact, it took him 14 years to even tell people that he went on the trip. But he said, because he didn't want them to think he was out of his head and totally an idiot. He said, I'm telling you something. It was a real experience. It was a real place. Woo, heaven is real. And in addition to that, listen to what he says. Heaven's not only a real place. Heaven is a prepared place. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place. This is my friend. How many of you have him as your friend here today? I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Now think about that. Do you realize what a compliment that is to you and me? That he so wants to be with us? The, the, the carpenter of Nazareth? The creator of the universe? He's wanting to be with us? Oh my Lord have mercy. <laughs> See the meaning of the passage is clear to all of us. It's the desire of the Lord that he, he wants to be with his children. Incidentally, on the humorous note, I heard about the elderly couple. They, they both died at the same time, been married for years. And they arrived at the pearly gates and Peter's standing there. And Peter said, come on in and there's your mansion. And he took them inside the mansion in heaven. And uh, man, this guy looked at this glorious mansion. He turned to Peter and said, how much does it cost to spend the night here? And Peter said, hey, fellow, this is heaven. Everything's free. You don't have to pay anything. Whoo! The guy's blown away. And Peter said, follow me. And he took him over. He took him to the banquet hall. And man, this guy walked in, and he looked at that table loaded with all of that delicious, delectable food. He said, my Lord, have mercy. He said, how much does a meal cost? Peter said, hey, I told you. This is heaven. Everything's free here. Boy, this guy can't hardly believe it. Peter said, follow me. He takes him out back, and he shows him the golf course. And <laughs> not a blade of grass. It's the most magnificent, beautiful golf course. This guy's jaw drops. And Peter turns and said, now listen, before you can say anything, I just want to remind you, there's no green fees. Everything's free in heaven. The old man looked at his wife. He said, woman, you and your confounded brand muffins, I could have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got news for you. You know, we do everything we can. Uh, we need to enjoy the life that God gives you. But I want to tell you something. It's going to be wonderful. Oh, I, I, rem <laughs> I remember the crazy story about the, the very popular televangelist that landed at the door of heaven. And P Peter looked at him and, and uh, he started to explain heaven. And all of a sudden, this little old woman comes running up. And Peter said, oh, we've been waiting for you, girl. And he opens the door and points. And the, and the preacher could see this, televangelist could see this unbelievable, magnificent mansion this old woman's getting. Boy, he stood there, a big smile on his face, said, if that old woman gets a mansion like that, woo what am I going to get? Peter turns back to him in a minute and says, now that's your mansion right over there. And this very modest, small, little old house. He said, hey, just a minute here. Pete, I, 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 I preach the Bible all my life, all over the world. Peter looked at him and said, listen, preacher, that old woman got more people into, into heaven and out of hell by her driving than you ever did with any of your preaching. <laughs> I, think we, I think we came by that woman on the road from Sacramento yesterday, but anyhow... <laughs> Hey, listen to the description that John gives us in Revelation chapter 21 about heaven. Three verses here. Listen to this. 
the, and you were talking about the foundation that we have. Here's what he says. The foundations of the city wall were beautifully decorated with all kinds of gems. The first foundation was gray quartz, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald. Whew. Wrap your brain around that. The fifth onyx, the, the, the sixth red quartz, the seventh yellow quartz, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth green quartz, the eleventh jacketh, and the twelfth amethyst. Verse 21, the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each gate was made of one pearl. The street of the city was made of pure gold, as clear as glass. Whew. Just, just take a moment and think about what John is describing. The beauty itself is almost beyond our imagination. You know, I read of a man, true story, and I think it was in New York, that he went into a uh, an art studio, very distinguished art studio. And the, the owner had his Bible open to this passage in Revelation chapter 21. And uh, the guy mentioned that he was a Christian, and the guy said, look at this. He was arranging on this table squares of colored glass. And here's what he said. He said, look, I have made a singular incredible discovery. This is the artist talking to this guy. He said, these are the precious stones that's in the foundation of the New Jerusalem. And he said, these are being placed in the order that the vision that John received, and they actually form a perfect harmony of color. He went on and said, listen, if you were to gather together a convention of artists, and you ask them to produce a color scheme that was perfect, they could not improve upon this color scheme. John tells us here in Revelation that heaven has streets of gold, its gates of pearl, a great white throne that's surrounded by a rainbow that looks like an emerald, and on the throne sits the Lamb of God, and the throne is surrounded by 24 uh, thrones with 24 elders dressed in white robes, golden crowns on their heads and in front of the throne there is a sea of glass like crystal and there's a river the water of life that flows from the throne of God through the streets of heaven and on each side of the river it, of the tree of life it has 12 kinds of fruit it brings there's not one dead leaf anywhere in heaven and then heaven's a big place he describes the size yeah, that, that's, there's room for everybody. It's 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles high, and the wall that is built around it of jasper and its foundation adorned with 12 different precious jewels. Mm. How many of you know that God loves beautiful things? Boy, all you've got to do is just look at the world around us. Who do you think painted the butterfly? And his wing with all of those gorgeous hues. Who, who do you think made those sunrises and sunsets last night when we were coming back from Sacramento and we looked at the setting sun and it affected somewhat by the fire? It looked like burning fire. Did any of you see the sunset last night? Who, who, who do you think? taught the raindrop to take a ray of light from the sun and pencil it on the sky in one huge arch of bewildering elegance. And in South Texas, we don't have the beautiful trees like you have in Eureka, those incredible redwoods that majestically point toward heaven. About 75 miles from San Antonio is Garner State Park, where every fall, the maple trees look like a ball of fire. And the beauty is incredible. Who, who do you think made my daughter and son-in-law just got back from a wife? Who, who do you think made the fish? And all of those colors in the bottom of the ocean and some of them that the human eye has never even seen. Oh yeah, God likes beautiful things. 
And then you know what? Right here, talking about the fact that he prepared. He, it's a prepared place. Let me just tell you, you know there's seven things that won't be there? In Revelation, chapter 21, he begins, and he tells you seven things. Actually, they're the seven no mores. Look at it with me just for a moment. Chapter 21 of Revelation, verse 1 down through verse 4. In fact, I've got the verses. Look, look at this. You'll count four or five of them right here in these verses. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And here's the first one. There was no more sea. I'll come back to it. Verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, now let me identify the seven things. Seven no mores in Revelation right here. First of all, there's no more sea. You see, what's that? It's the rivers, the oceans, the seas the waterways of the world that have divide, divided all the various nations and the people groups. But I'm telling you something, when he comes, he's going to gather together all in heaven and in earth of all, of all people of one blood. Heaven is going to be a wonderful place. No more division. No more hatred. There will be no prejudice. There's not going to be any white power, black power, whose power. It's all going to be God's power. <laughs> Amen. And then he says there's not going to be any more tears. No more tears. All the tears and crying will be wiped away. Dottie Rambo wrote that beautiful song. Tears will never stain the streets of that city. Mmm. Can you calculate the heartache, the tears of humanity? He's going to wipe it away. And then no more, no more death. You know, from the Garden of Eden with the death of Abel who was murdered by his brother Cain, the human race in the last 6,000 years has been one long funeral dirge. Think of all the heartache, the tears, the brokenness, the goodbyes. But I'm telling you, there will be no more death. Hmm. Somebody else say hallelujah for that. Oh, yeah. And then in verse 4, he says there will be no more sorrow. No more sorrow. Number 5, he said there will be no more pain. <laughs> how many how many of you kind of live with pain you're you're you know <laughs> you, you live with pain there'll be no more do you know first corinthians chapter 15 listen to what he says i see you rubbing that arm <laughs> he says in in corinthians 15 he says that our heavenly bodies will know no corruption or dishonor See, what that means is that unlike this physical house, this physical body that we live in, that body will never grow old. There will be no age, no weakness. It will experience no deterioration, no decay, no disease. My body, that body will not be susceptible to any infirmity, no sickness or disease. That those bodies, they will be glorious and powerful and dynamic. Those new heavenly bodies will not be limited by time and space. We'll have a body like His glorious body. Remember, Jesus ate with His disciples. He walked through the wall. I mean, He was here. He was there. He was with them in Jerusalem. He was there in Galilee. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, what, there will be no limitation, no pain, no suffering. Woo! Hallelujah. Dear Lord. 